Hello, everybody. I just got done filming my regular content, and here's the story time that I promised we'd get these off so the lights aren't doing their thing. So this is the story time video I had promised <laughs> about the time my friend, when I was living in Los Angeles, tried to set me up with Jason Schwartzman. Now, this happened over 20 years ago. I have not thought about this. It popped into my head while I was vacuuming. I don't know, but it cracked me up and I thought, Maybe some of you guys out there who know that I used to be out there would want to hear the story. So again, please keep in mind, this was over 20 years ago. So details are a little fuzzy. So I had this friend out in LA. She was the only person, or I should say the first person that I met who was born and raised in LA around the industry. Now, everybody else I was friends with, they were also transplants. We didn't know nothing. We don't know anything, especially me. And I have to explain this. I came to LA for the adventure of it. I didn't come here to be famous. I mean, the little bit of acting that I had done was on the stage. But again, I studied theater because I loved, I love storytelling, right? I love embodying a story. The fame, that seems like a hassle. I don't know who people have in there. People already got their expectations on you in day-to-day -day life when you're just a regular person. <laughs> what happens when you're a celebrity? I mean, I gotta go outside cute all the time. But trying to look like I wasn't trying to look cute, that's a lie. Okay, all of us a lie. <laughs> but in Hollywood, I was a giant weirdo because I wasn't interested in fame. Not really. I mean, if it happened, cool. Does that mean I get a good table somewhere? But, you know, I'm not, that's not why I'm there. Uh, and I also refused to use people. The people that I came across in the industry... I had respect for what they did, but I didn't want to feed off of their accomplishments. I was more interested in who they were as a person. That truly is what is of value to me <laughs> in this world. But because I wouldn't, you know, just jump in there and put myself in everybody's face, people were saying, you know, you're not hungry enough. You're not doing enough. You'll never make it in this town. The whole bit. But this was the friend. This would have been... Oh dear, uh, I moved there in August of 99, so I had to be after that. Um, yeah, somewhere in there, I don't know. <laughs> but she comes to me and she says, I have a friend in a band. <laughs> no, whatever you're gonna ask me, do I wanna date him? No. Do I wanna go see them play? No. I'm not going into another nasty bar where there is vomiting and urination in progress. Yeah, it doesn't smell like that because it happened at one time. It's happening right now, okay, no. Well, my friend's band, they're going to be playing at the, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. The Troubadour, the Roxy. Let's just say the Troubadour. So when she said this venue, I said, oh. And she said, have you seen a show there yet? And I don't think I had. Yeah, I, don't, I can't remember what the heck the place was called. So no. Uh, and she said, oh, well, you know, they're a pretty legit band. Okay, tell me more. <laughs> She said, it's Phantom Planet. Have you ever heard of them? I hadn't. And she's like, but you've heard their music, right? I don't know. Like, I literally, you got to understand what I was coming to the table with. Life was survival, okay? I don't have a lot of time to be, like, hanging out at the music store. We actually had music stores still back then. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to see movies because I was trying to pay the rent. <laughs> okay, so, sorry, but that's how it is. I will go with you to this show and she said oh yeah and you know my friend Jason if if he's hanging out afterwards I don't know what he's doing but I'll introduce you and then you'll know two LA people and I'm like well that is saying something <laughs> it really <laughs> that would be great and I was you know she was so excited about it and she was really talking up her friend Jason I should explain this again we were in our early 20s our brains are not fully developed we're kind of immature and uh, we talk like this and we said things like he's so cute and I understand guys hate that but let's talk about that for a second it's not about the words look at the face listen to the tone if we say he's cute <laughs> okay yeah you're probably lukewarm right but he is so cute she's saying a lot okay she's really complimenting you she says he's adorable means you emotionally connected to her okay so it might not sound great but it's a thing so she's talking about her friend Jason 
And she said, he's such a sweetheart. He, oh, Michelle, you adore him. Like he's, I know how you are with people out here, you know, because I don't like ego. I can't. It's disgusting. I hate it. But uh, she said, I know you're not into that, but he's so not that person. You know, I really think you'll like him a lot. And I said, oh, well, yeah, I, I can't wait to meet him. And she gets quiet and she just kind of examines me. She goes, okay, I don't think I'm supposed to tell you this. I don't know if it's a good idea to tell you this, but <laughs> I can't do this with a straight face. <laughs> the things that would happen out there. Oh, the drama. She said, my friend is Jason Schwartzman. And I said, okay. <laughs> no. Michelle, Jason Schwartzman. Like, he's kind of a big deal. Rushmore, haven't seen it. He was just on David Letterman, didn't see it. Okay, well, and then she, I, I want to be respectful here. She started to tell me a little bit more about him, and that was where it got into Hollywood quizzing. And uh, uh, I felt my soul leave my body. I, I she, she gets rough about this stuff. We got to Nicolas Cage, and she said, I swear to God, Michelle, if you haven't, if you say you haven't heard of Nicolas Cage, I might punch you in the face. I, question, does Nicolas Cage even know who you are? And if he does, does he like you? <laughs> I don't know. Or is he kind of always rolling his eyes like, oh, gosh, you're coming to the barbecue? Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> let's not let's not get violent. OK, this is a little crazy. So we, we're, she's telling me about Jason Schwartzman. He's kind of a big deal, which is, you know, such an L.A. thing to say. And she did. I, I wish mm, I wish my memory served me better. But she said that for a reason. And I think the reason was like if I found out. Like if I'm meeting him and then I find out and then later on I could come back to her and be like, why didn't you tell me who he was? Like what in the world? <laughs> I think she was afraid of that. Um, but in hindsight, I kind of wish she hadn't told me who he was. And I kind of wish maybe I'd had a chance to meet him out in the wild because I think it would have gone differently than it did. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But we go to the concert and I have to explain this part of the story. So I am five foot two. Uh, I don't know what that is in centimeters for people outside the U.S. I'm sorry. Anybody do quick conversion? <laughs> sorry. I'm five foot two, so I'm really close to the ground. My friend, she's even shorter than I am and even closer to the ground. When we go to concerts, music events and all this stuff, it's not great. It's not great. We are not seeing anybody on the stage. If you're going to see anything, you have to kind of move the opposite way. Everybody else is dancing and maybe you can kind of see between heads or like if someone's got their arm like this, the crook of their arm, like <laughs> it's a thing. I think all I got to see were some like drumsticks flying around, like a piece of a guitar hanging out and like some floppy band hair here and there. That's all I saw. Okay. But in this scenario, my friend is really trying to get me. Like I thought she kind of had a thing for Jason. She's talking about him a lot. He's so cute. He's so, ah, uh, like, he's such a sweetheart. He's, <laughs> he's so great. You know, just the whole thing. And she's uh, really trying to get me to see which one he is. Again, she's like five feet tall. We're in with a bunch of sequoias. And she's stretched all the way up trying to point. I know you can't see what you're pointing at. What am I supposed to be looking at? Like, <laughs> just, just don't hurt yourself, okay? Don't pull anything. We'll, we'll get outside here soon enough. So I remember we had to go outside to wait on them, which I hated. I hated being those people. We're waiting for the band. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're standing out there waiting. We were waiting a very, very, very long time. We were talking about leaving and she got, well, actually I was talking about leaving. She wasn't, I was. <laughs> she, I remember she got a little snippy with me. Like the stakes were high. Again, she got the hospital, this Jason guy. I don't even know who he is, but I'm already sick of him. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna be talking about him all the way home like the whole thing uh but she really insisted on us staying there and she, I, I don't remember I, maybe they were getting ready to go on tour I don't know something about nah, I'm acting like I'm gonna be able to access that in my brain I don't remember um but she I think she wanted to see him or say hi to him before he went on tour great so we're all hanging out on the sidewalk I was quite frankly a little bored uh, just wanted a hot shower and my bed. <laughs> you know, people would look at me and maybe think I was a party girl and I had fun, but really nothing like a cozy night at home. <laughs> There's really not. And if you got a hot boyfriend that's willing to do that with you, even better. But finally, 
I don't even know how long we were out there. A long time. Finally, the band comes out. I look over and she's talking to some guy <laughs> with like floppy band hair. Okay. So maybe this is Jason, but who knows? Now she said she wanted to introduce me. So I'm, you know, just kind of hanging out, waiting for them to catch up. And then maybe she's going to wave me over. And I'm like, la di da di da And I look back over. And what I remember, I don't remember her making an introduction. What I remember, or it's cemented in my brain somehow, is that I look back over and now she's talking to somebody else. And I was like, well, where'd that one guy go? <laughs> and I look over and he's walking right up to me. Now, I didn't know this was Jason at the time, but looking back, I realized my very first thought of Jason Schwartzman was, what's he doing? <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> what's he Maybe this isn't Jason because she was going to bring him over. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I have no idea what's going on. And he walks right up to me and he asked me something and I answered him. And he said, thank you. And then he walked like five feet away and just like hovered. He was just over here like just. And I said, are, are you Jason? And he looks up. This, this, was, this was adorable. He looks up and he goes, oh, yeah, I'm Jason. I was with Phantom Planet. Oh, <laughs> hi, Jason. Oh, my God, it's Jason. He really is a celebrity now in my brain. Like, yay, Jason, I finally meet this guy. Okay. And I said, um, I said, you know, we have a friend in common. I'm Michelle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a great show. And we end up having this really great conversation about the band. And these are the things I know this is probably when you're like, how to go? What kind of person was he? I don't know. I talked to him for like 10 minutes, but he seemed great. Okay, I, my first impression of him is that he was really great, like really smart, obviously creative and talented. And he was very inclusive. That I remember because I thought that was really cool of him. It wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to be on, going on tour or I'm doing this or I'm writing these songs or I'm doing, it wasn't that. It was we are doing this and we, and oh, that wasn't me. That was that person, you know, he, he, I liked him. I liked him a lot. I thought he was a really cool guy. I could sit and listen to him talk all day. Why? He was passionate. I love passionate people. I think that is a beautiful human quality. And, um, and, and having so much potential too. You could just like, I, I was, I don't even know the guy, but I was like excited to see what he comes up with next. Like, what's he going to create in this world? I don't know. It was just like that kind of, it sounds so dramatic, but <laughs> that's kind of what I felt. I think somewhere in this discussion, and I can't, I'm sorry, I cannot remember how I figured out it was a setup, but it was while I was talking to him, because I remember I about died. <laughs> that I remember, I remember how I felt. So she either, I don't know, she tried to set me up so many times, so I might be getting my memories mixed up, but she may have come in and like dropped the awkward bomb and then just like walked away like, oh, I knew you two would get along. Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna leave you alone to see what, if you can make babies. I don't know, she just like leaves. I don't, I don't remember if she did that, but she may have like been... <laughs> making faces at us like, you know, from over there. I don't remember. Something that was mortifying. And uh, I'm scrambling now. Because that just put pressure on this. You can't pressure me with nothing, okay? You pressure me for anything and I just leave. <laughs> I think that's called being avoidant. I'm not sure, but yeah, not, not good. It wasn't good. But the conversation started to dwindle, which was sad because I wanted to hear more of what he had to say. I was really fascinated by everything. Like everything that he's, you know, doing and think about that. I mean, he, he's, I think he's younger than me or he seemed younger than me. Uh, so yeah, and I was about, I guess maybe around 23 at the time. So that, and he's already doing all this. That's crazy. So after this, the conversation is kind of dying down, but we're having such a good conversation. I, uh, okay, let me see if I can keep this going, but what do I talk about? What do I do? What do I talk about? Can't talk about the weather. It's bad anyway. It's doubly bad in LA. It's the same stuff over and over and over again. And I remembered that she said he was in this movie Rushmore. So I said, you're an actor too. That's incredible. Like you, you do all of this. And he looked at me, he looked a little confused. And I said, Rushmore? Yeah. Are you an actor? Oh no. Hmm. Okay. I didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> I really didn't. I still don't understand what was going on. I mean, I understand a little bit better, but he's, and I said, well, I'm, I'm trying. I, it's not really going well. <laughs> but he was like, oh, okay. I was like, I think I even said, I'm sorry if that was like a sore subject. And he's like, 
no, it was a great opportunity and a really fantastic project. It was great. It's just, you didn't seem to know me when I walked up, but you know the movie? I hadn't seen the movie. And I explained this to him. I, I didn't see the movie. I, you know, heard about it from our friend. And he's like, oh, oh, okay. But both of us just went, burp, burp. <laughs> That was it. Uh, one of his friends had to come in. It's like Joe Slick over here. But I saw him looking back and forth between the two of us. And then he came over and said, hey, man, like, I need your help over here. And he said, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> it was my karma coming home to roost because I've done that so many times to other people. So it was fine. Whatever. I figured, okay, okay, bye. It's, it's cool. Bye. And uh, I go over to my friend and I'm just, you know, at this point, this is just going to be the night I saw Phantom Planet and I chatted with Jason Schwartzman for a little bit. He was fascinating and okay, that's the end of the story. But no, I was hanging out with a group of swarthy hussies who had to bring drama to everything. I'm walking up, my matchmaker friend is like, whoa, whoa, why are you over here? Why aren't you talking to him? And I was like, okay, now listen, I'll ask the questions. Was this a setup? What was with the faces? And she's like, yeah, uh, I was like, why didn't you tell me? Because I thought you'd be nervous. Because I'm doing so great right now. Like, don't do that to me. Really the best, I think, if you're going to set somebody up, first of all, make sure they're both ready for whatever just happened. I don't know what his deal was, but like I said, is he wasn't into it. I, well, I, I got the impression he wasn't into it. Like his mind was elsewhere. Um, we shouldn't be making decisions for our friends about when they should be dating. But if they've both made it clear that they're ready to date and you think that they'll get along, just say, hey, Michelle, let's all go out for a drink on Friday night. My friend Jason is going to join us. We're all just going to hang out and let, let it be what it's going to be. <laughs> Don't force it. Don't put pressure on it. Just let it be whatever it's going to be. But now we're in this mess. And I said, well, I'm not, I'm not going back over there. He... He got really guarded about what, I don't know, I brought up, I don't know what I did. I did explain a little bit of the situation to her and she said, oh, he's got to protect himself. Okay, but not from me. Like, I think that was the thing that bothered me. Um, and he wouldn't know that, but just, I don't know if it's like questioning my integrity or if, if, I don't know what it was, but I was like, I'm not that person and I don't like being thought of as that type of person. And my friend talked me through that and she's, I'm not going to put it in a video here, but she's saying some other things and she's like, give it two minutes and go talk to him again. I said, I'm not doing anything, <laughs> I'm not doing anything. If you guys want to go, I'm ready to go. They were still mingling a little bit. So I said, that's cool. You know, I'm good. I'll just hang out a little bit. Let me know when you're ready. So I kind of, I just needed, you guys know, I can't do crowds for very long. I need to kind of decompress. So I step away from everybody a little bit and I'm alone for about 10 seconds. And here comes this person who apparently is bothered when people aren't talking. I don't know. I don't know who he was, but God bless him. I think he meant well. Uh, he comes up and says, what are you over here all by yourself for? Why aren't you talking to people? And so we start talking and Jason starts orbiting again. Like he's just popping around. I, I knew that because I could feel his eyeballs on me. I could feel eyeballs and I was like, oh, he's looking. He's over here looking at us. So I don't know if he thought we were talking about him or not or if he overheard us, but we were. And this was something really, I thought was really cool about that night too. And I wonder if Jason is even aware of how loved he is. I mean that really because people, I mean, my, my friend was you know, really talking him up. This guy is singing his praises and uh, he must have heard his name because <laughs> he came on over and he's like, so what are you guys up to over here? And we're all just chatting. This is how it went. This isn't that interesting a story, I suppose. But the one guy who I don't know who he is, but he walks away and now it's Jason and I. And I am very nervous about whatever I say might be the wrong thing to say. I'm just going to be honest. I come to the table with my own stuff and I will admit that I came to the table with a judgment of him that he I, I have my guard up that he could be this spoiled Hollywood brat and when he's he, he didn't do anything wrong here he was just trying to get clarification and again probably to protect himself uh and I took that as like well I don't know like now everything I say is wrong you see you see remember I'm in my early 20s <laughs> brain not fully developed okay <laughs> it wasn't great but um I was still kind of now my guard is up I'm kind of watching him for any other kind of sign that you know he might be set off or anything I didn't it, which is unfair like he's not like that he didn't seem like that 
at all. And as a matter of fact, we had a really lovely conversation. I don't, I remember, I think I brought up something about earthquakes. Um, <laughs> Cause he was asking me, I, you know, he said, I didn't get a chance to ask you what brought you here. Uh, and I said, you know, how it had been and all that stuff. And I said, well, I had my first earthquake and that was, that was, that was a lot. <laughs> right? And he smiled and I felt so at ease when he smiled. I'll give the guy credit. Cause some of you have been like screaming at your screens going, what does he look like in person? Very cute. As you might imagine, gorgeous eyes, gorgeous smile. And yeah, you, I guess you could see that from photographs, but it's different standing in front of him. But, uh, but yeah, like I felt very at ease when he smiled. I was like, okay, okay. And I felt at least my guard was starting to come down a little bit. And then he got pulled away again. But this time he was, you know, he was very polite about it the first time, even though his buddy came in to save him. But <laughs> this time he seemed like, uh, okay, are you going to be here in a minute? You guys going to hang out for a few minutes? I'll be right back. And so he went off and it was just a whole lot of like back and forth like that through the evening and just hanging out. And then I remember the band was going to go off and hang out somewhere. <laughs> and this is funny because someone in the band invited us to go along and then someone else in the band, it wasn't Jason, but somebody else in the band uninvited us and basically said, we can't take all these people with us. So I don't remember where they were going, but it was really, it's just, that was rude. <laughs> we got invited and then uninvited. So we part ways and that was the last time I ever saw Jason. So again, you would think that that's a funny story, you know, the awkwardness of it all and all that, and that would be the end. But no, not with these girls. We get into the car. Matchmaker friend is like, Ugh, please tell me you gave, please tell me you gave him your phone number. I didn't. Why not? Oh my God, Michelle, you just always ruin everything. I know. Why would I give him a, I, he didn't ask for it. Why would I give him my phone number? <laughs> he didn't want it. Leave the guy be. And she said, no, he's not going to ask for it. He's too shy. You have to just give it to him. Okay, comment down below. How many of you would be like, okay, we've, <laughs> Had somewhat awkward conversation tonight. Uh, it's been interesting. And here, here's my phone number. Like, call me. Yeah, nobody's going to do that. Okay, nobody's going to do that. I don't think so. Maybe some of you. Let me know who you are. But now I'm getting it for not giving him, my, forcing my phone number on him. And uh, I, well, I did say, I said, you know, at some point he talked to me like a colleague. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think this was that kind of thing. I don't think so. Uh, and then she said, well, is it okay if I give him? your phone number. And I said, I don't think he wants it. I think he does. I don't think you know what you're talking about. No, he was totally into you. That don't seem correct. Okay. Uh, were you paying attention? Were you there? It was this. Okay. It was this. And finally I said, I would love to hang out with him and get to know him better. If he wants my phone number, he's welcome to have it. Okay. Well, I'll make sure he has it. Oh, don't pressure him if he wants it. <sighs> Never heard from him. <laughs> Because I, I was probably right, okay? So <laughs> you would think that that would be the end of the story. Some people get to move on. You know what I mean? Like, it was just a great time. Let's just enjoy the memory. But no, we're hanging out two weeks later, two, three weeks later, something like that. They're hanging out at somebody's house on a Saturday night because we ain't got nothing else to do. I think we were having beer or something. So nosy friend leans over and she's tapping my hand and she's all giddy. And she says, whatever happened with you and Jason? This is how we talked back then. It was terrible. With my grown-out pixie cut highlighted with, like, the barrettes and things. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, she said, what happened? I said, nothing. And she said, what do you mean nothing? I mean nothing. No, why are you asking? <laughs> what is your agenda? <laughs> what is going on here? And for a third time, she said, he didn't call? No, he didn't call. Jason. Looking over at matchmaker friend. Jason didn't call you? Y'all been talking about this behind my back. All of the scandalous things going on behind my back. You can't trust these people. And I'm like, okay, I'm not talking about this anymore. This is awkward. You took something that was like a cute memory and now you're kind of turning it into a trauma. You're making it a rejection. <laughs> alone. So she looks over at matchmaker friend and matchmaker friend is studying the table. Just studying the table. I still don't know what was going on. This, like, this is just my perception. There could have been a whole other thing. I, I don't have time or energy for it. But anyway, matchmaker friend says, well, 
he went, I think he went on tour, or he's going to be out of town or whatever. He'll probably call her when he gets back. Why does everybody keep thinking that this, no, <laughs> this is not what was going on there. I don't, I don't, again, always the outsider, always the alienated one. Like I was fine with what it was, but they're making it into something else. Again, they got money on it. How much you want to bet? goes on and on and on this one keeps pressing her and saying did you and then finally matchmaker friend detonates she detonated she threw a whole fit and she didn't come at nosy friend <laughs> no she's looking at me and she said it's your fault you flirted with this bandmate all night girl i had cramps i was not flirting with nobody as a matter of fact if I had maybe met Jason Schwartzman a few days later, it could have been different, okay? I just wanted a hot shower in my bed. <laughs> so that's a lie. You're just trying to work this. So I don't, what'd you do? Like, what did you do wrong? And then she kept on going. And she said, if he doesn't like you, he doesn't like you. <laughs> Quit talking about it. And then what did she say after that? She, uh, she jumped up from the table. Oh, she said, you can take care of your own love life from now on. Yes, that. When she jumped up, she knocked some stuff around. Stuff's still moving around on the table. Nosy friend is unfazed. And she's sitting there going, I don't think she gave the number. I don't think she did. I don't think she did. Matchmaker friend heard this and said, quit talking about it. She's like still off in another room. I hate these people. I mean, God bless them. But no, this was, this was bad. This took something that was already kind of weird and made it made it this okay 20 years later I still remember this crap now again this should be the end of the story most people get to move on as I've said but this is Jason Schwartzman his big face is everywhere everywhere you look in various phases of bearding sometimes I didn't even know it was looking at him until it was too late there he is can't run away his whole career took off <laughs> I have, and it wasn't even because of him. It was because of this group of girls. That was the thing that causes the sting, right? Or I see Coppola on a bottle of wine. I get a little like, like a little tick. I'll tell you what, when Marie Antoinette was coming out, I knew it was being directed by Sofia Coppola. And I still kind of like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is so my kind of movie. I'm here for it. I'm living. I'm ready to go. I know some of you who don't live in the United States, you think it's completely disgusting that we eat food while we watch movies. I don't know. It's, it's not great. But if you do want to get that American body, which is uh, thick and wiggly, this is what you do, okay? When you're watching a movie, when you're just sitting and doing nothing, right? You got to get that buttery popcorn and then you put some M&Ms or whatever the Swedish version of M&Ms would be. And snow caps was just chocolate chips, like the white, the, what are they called? non or something? They're white sprinkles. <sighs> People try to make everything so complicated. Put those in there. You got to mix it up and you get the butter all over the thing. And then it's like, you got to use like a claw nails help but you do this and that's how you get the body right okay so I'm ready I'm set I'm gonna watch Marie Antoinette this is a hair stylized historical fiction great music interesting direction costumes oh the costume the wig master's the master of everything I'm just living I'm just having a great time watching this and it was spectacular by the way and boom Jason there he is he's the king that's the last time I'll ever say that <laughs> you boys Louis the stop yelling nerds Stop yelling at the screen, nerds. I'll get there. X V1. That's <laughs> 16. Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. But yeah, like everything is just ruined now. I can't watch late night talk shows or anything like that. Oh, excuse me. I did end up accidentally seeing one because like, I was listening to it and then I came out and it was Jason. And I was like, he's funny. Like he's really funny. He wasn't funny with me. I didn't get none of that. Because I would have fallen in love with him right there on the spot if he was funny with me. But no, I didn't get any of that. So anyway, that is the memory, the random messy memory that popped up while I was vacuuming. If you would like to hear other messy stories, including the time that I spoke to Steve Jobs on the phone and didn't know who he was, leave me alone, okay? <laughs> I have more messy stories than any human being should ever have. But maybe it'll be therapeutic to share them. Let me know. Thanks for watching. No, I'm not that girl.